My name is Ayo Deliadio. I am the host of The Trio. I am a tough guy that likes to ask the tough questions. That's what I love to do because I love an honest debate and I love a frank discussion. And that's what I do every single week on the show. I get politicians at the other side of the table, businessmen, people in civil society, pastors, whoever they are. It is my job to ask the tough questions that make them uncomfortable so that you listeners can get the best out of my interviews. Join me every week on The Drill as I ask the most uncomfortable questions the most important people in society. Chinon So Victor, you're welcome to the drill. Um, it's a pleasure to have you here. Fascinating voice, wonderful song, properly scripted lyrics, music to my ears and my soul. It's completely fed. Thank you very much. How did you start music? Thank you very much. I started music uh, way back when I was very young. Uh, growing up, I discovered I could sing. At home, I was singing in school, I was singing, and uh, I, later on I joined the choir at a very young age. Wow. So, so why, did you, why did you choose gospel music as a young man? Because, I mean, um, it's, it's common knowledge that gospel music hardly sells. You're not going to make a lot of money from singing gospel music. So, so why, why was it gospel for you and not hip-hop or something? Yeah, gospel music for me isn't about to make money. It's all about to, to touch lives, to minister to people, to let people know more about God because gospel is all about God. It's all about telling people the good news about Jesus. So I have to do gospel music because I needed to reach out to men, to reach out to people, you know, through... Uh, gospel music to tell them about God. So that's why I choose gospel music. So music for you is, is, is a ministry and not so much a commercial venture. You do this just to reach out to souls that are lost and not really so that you can make albums or hit a platinum or buy a new house and a car. And not really because the most important thing is for the people out there. There are so many people who are discouraged, who are broken and who you know, uh, going through a lot of things and so many difficult times in their lives and it's just God that can help them out. Uh, uh, and it's gospel music. You have to reach out to them through gospel music to liberate them and bring them out of uh, whatever they're going through, through gospel music. Now I understand that um, you're a full-time musical gospel artist and, and I'm struggling to, to, to understand how you support yourself if this is strictly a ministry for you and it's not a commercial venture. How do you put food on your table with a music career that isn't going commercial? Yeah, I, I do gospel music and uh, also support myself uh, with pie I'd say a little thing you know, just a few things like uh, I have a, a small uh, laundry that I run and uh, sometimes I do the ironing and uh, 
and sometimes I, you know, do some other things in there just to add to what I'm doing. I mean, t talking about the fact that you're on a laundry, I think this is an interesting time, you know, to say, you know, so that our, our viewers can know that you are blind. And it's incredible to hear that even without your sight, you can still effectively run laundry service. How in the world do you pull that off? Yes, you know, uh, by the grace of God, you know, the Bible says we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us and you, and uh, uh, it's just by His grace that I can do uh, some of these things. And, uh, you know, before then I, I was doing things like this. I could iron for myself, I could wash my clothes and do those stuff. So uh, uh, when this challenge came up, it, it wasn't uh, something that was, you know, difficult for me to do. I just have to continue with what I was doing. Before. I'm trying to wrap my head around how you can select a cloth, how you know whether it's a long sleeve or a short sleeve, how you can tell whether the cloth is clean. Yes. How do you keep your customers happy? Don't you make series of mistakes every single day? Yeah, I have people around me who support me, my wife and uh, uh, some of the workers, the staff also who support me, ask questions and try to know how is this thing, is it looking, is it looking good, is it good, is it clean or dirty, so what can we do about it? So I have to ask questions and people around me really are giving me the support. I mean, before we talk about how you met your wife, because uh, I, I find it quite interesting how you eventually um, you know, met a woman that you love you know, when you got blind. Um, I figure, or I gather, that you lost your sight on a particular day when you were singing in church. Am I correct? Tell me about the experience and how you lost your sight um, singing in church. Yeah, just while singing in church and uh, on a very Sunday morning, I just uh, taking the praise and worship. I noticed that the, the my vision was, you know, I I couldn't see clearly with the eyes, and then uh, I had to just leave the church and went back home and tried everything from there, you know, uh, try to take some drugs, apply some drugs, go to hospitals and uh, right there before I could know what was going on, uh, the vision, you know, became worse and, you know, that was how it all started. So, so you never had any sign, any symptom, any pain? Just one Sunday morning, here you are singing in church, yes, and the light goes off and you're blind. Yeah, yes, but it, it didn't just go off immediately. It took some some days, you know. I had the, the scratch in my eyes. The eyes were swelling, reddish, and uh, it took some time, some days after some days, and uh, uh, it didn't just. Uh, you yeah. went to the hospital. What yeah. did the doctors say? Oh, uh, they say it's glaucoma. That's what they said. That's what they said. It's, it's lost of vision. It's a, it just came. And it takes such a short time for glaucoma to, to send you yeah, blind. It, 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 you know, from from all of the what doctor said, uh, sometimes it, it can take a long time. Sometimes it can just come just like that. They say it's a thief. It comes like a thief, and, and that's it. And then it stole your own eyes. Yeah, but but I'm glad that it stole your eyes, but but didn't steal your voice. And yeah. How did you? keep up, you know, a straight face, raise your head high, even though you had lost your sight. How did you keep up your musical career going? Yes, I'm also really tell you, it, it wasn't easy, but uh, in everything, just like I said before, it's God that gives us strength to, to do all things. Uh, it wasn't easy for me at that time, because I was singing and uh, People knew me back then in church and and in other places where I go to sing and other events or programs where they invite me to sing and so when it happened I couldn't I wasn't able to go to those places again I wasn't able to go to church again but I had to like in my own house get my keyboard again and started from my house and you know I made up my mind that this voice wasn't gonna die. I, I I will use it 
you know, to the glory of God to reach out to men because when the physical eyes goes, that is the spiritual eyes that God has also given to me. So I don't see anymore with the physical eyes, but I see with the spiritual eyes and and I know that God still wants me to reach out to people. So you rallied yourself up, you encouraged yourself, you picked up the pieces, and then you kept on a musical career going. But, but how has life fundamentally or radically changed for you since you lost your sight? You, you, of course, you cannot do certain routines again. And just how much, just, just talk to me about how life has changed for you fundamentally since, since you lost your sight. And it's been how long now? Oh, but eight years now. Eight years. Yeah. How, how did you, how were you able to adjust and change? Um, you know, to accommodate this new reality, however sad the reality. Yes, it's so strange to me when it's happened because that was not how, uh, what I wanted for myself. That was not the vision I had for myself. That was not the dream I had for myself. I, it was difficult for me, but I have to like, because then, you know, when things like this happen, you, 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 the people that comes around you, that stays around you, your friends, you lose some of your friends. Most of my friends, you know, they, they left because uh, uh, it was difficult for them to stay with me. I lost the business I was doing then. I couldn't continue my business. I had to stay at home and uh, keep staying at home. Then I needed people to support me, to take me wherever I want to go because before I could go out on my own, but now I have to depend on you know, a brother or a sister or a friend to take me by the hand and go out. And sometimes it's not easy. You may not see anyone. You just stay at home from morning till the night time and no one comes around. It's, it's only when somebody comes that's when you're able to go out. And so it was really, really, really uh, difficult to me. But I had to like, you know, pick myself, encourage myself. And somehow God helped me. People were coming that's, you know, were ready to give a helping hand to me. Even though you, you, you were blind and you lost your sight, um, you still found a good thing. You still found a wife, you know, that you got to marry. Did you meet her before you got blind or it was after you got blind that you met her? It's actually, I, I met her before uh, the blindness came, you know. I knew her, she knew we were like, even we even got married before then, but it was just right after the the marriage. That was right after the marriage. It's that was when everything now started. How how hard has it been for her? I mean, she married a man who could see, and, and suddenly, a few years into the marriage, he's gone blind. Yeah, it wasn't easy for her to you know to cope with that because uh, she you know had didn't have in mind that such thing will happen. And it, it, when I myself didn't know that such thing was gonna happen, then we, you know, she had to like take it in good faith and she stood by me, you know, uh, uh, all the times I was trying to see if uh, there could be any solution to the eyes, to the problem, you know, she was there for me. She stood by me and then, uh, must must Hello. must be an incredible woman you found for yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Found that really incredible. Yeah. But is there no operational procedure anywhere in the world that that could change this? Um, I don't really know what. Is it what's, Yeah, I don't really know now if there has been anyone now. But as of the time it happened, you know, there was nothing really because uh, the 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 the. the, the the glaucoma, glaucoma comes to a stage where uh, nothing can be done. You can only manage it. So when you manage it to that level that nothing can be done again, uh, there's nothing you can do about it. So uh, I don't know now, right now, if there is any solution now to it. But back then, there was none. So, so you have like... Um are you in any association with visually impaired people, you know, where you meet, um, where you hang around together, where you share experiences? Do you have like a support group, you know, of visually impaired people or friends who are visually impaired? And not really, not really, but I just want to use my music to drive, you know, to, uh, uh, you know, to, to, to drive, you know, what I'm going through, to let people know, to let people hear me, to let people see me. So I want to use my music as 
you know, as, as, a, as a voice, as a tool for people to listen to me and hear me and know what I'm doing. So I don't really belong to any group or any association. So you've put all your heart into the music that you do and the art that you create to, to, change, to take your voice to the world and the ends of the earth. Yes, because, you know, some people, when they see me play the keyboard and sing, you know, it, 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 they, they are surprised. They say, how can this be? Play the keyboard, you sing, how do you see the keyboard? How do you know the keys that you play on? How are you able to understand, you know, the keyboard? And uh, I just say, it's just God. So that is what I want people to know about me, what God has, you know, deposited in me. I don't have to, you know, keep it there because of... The challenge that I have right now. It's a fascinating conversation with you, Chinon. So, and, and I hope that um, you can reach for the skies, touch the moon, and your music will go to the ends um, of the earth. And we'll play a song, um, you know, in our passing out, just to hear your voice one more time and let our viewers get a feel um, of your incredible music, you know, as we round up the interview. Thank you. You alone are God forever You're the King of all kings And the throne is everlasting You reign forevermore Heaven and earth adore you as it's popularly called on stage, um, is available for bookings um, in your church or in your conference. And I urge you um, to find a way to book him up and ensure that he performs in your church or in your concert. You will never regret this. Um, and it's your way of supporting his dream, um, his talent, and his passion to take his music to the ends of the earth. Thank you. My name is Ayo Deliadio. I am the host of The Dream. I am a tough guy that likes to ask the tough questions. That's what I love to do because I love an honest debate and I love a frank discussion. And that's what I do every single week on the show. I get politicians at the other side of the table, businessmen, people in civil society, pastors, whoever they are. It is my job to ask the tough questions that make them uncomfortable so that you listeners can get the best out of my interview. Join me every week on The Drill as I ask the most uncomfortable questions, the most important people.